What's up, guys? Matt Brown here for PlayPicks.com. I want to take a look at some of the plays we are looking at at DraftKings DFS this week. First, let's start out by taking a look at the lobby here, some of the tournaments that I really enjoy playing, and just what DraftKings has to offer this week. If you take a look, the Millionaire Maker here, only $10 buy-in this week. It's usually a $20 buy-in, only a $10 buy-in this week with $4 million guaranteed. That's going to pay out a million to first place as usual. Uh, but interesting that it's a $10 payout. What that does do, however, is it gets rid of one of the tournaments I really like. The Slant is a $9 buy-in, usually a half million dollar guarantee in that one with a nice flatter pay schedule and uh, 50, you know, 10%, $50,000 payout to first place, but that's not happening this week. Well, it's happening just much smaller. So uh, anyway, $10 millionaire maker this week. The uh, play action, $3, 750000 That's the 20 entry maximum tournament there. So, uh, you know, look, you're not going to get those big 100, 100 entry guys, 150 entry guys in there. So uh, certainly something to take a look at as well. This first down right here is a $1, $200,000 guaranteed. I particularly like the Spy. This is a single entry. It is a $100 buy-in, so if your bankroll allows for it. But I really like this tournament. Um, single entry, and you get $30,000 for first place in that one. You're only going up against... 2,222 people in that one. So certainly a tournament that I like to uh, get in each week. Scrolling up a little bit more here, if your bankroll is uh, a little bit lower, quarter jukebox, 50,000 bucks this week. So certainly can get in that one. There's a single entry a little bit lower than the SPY, obviously $12 buy in here with 150,000 guaranteed. I like these three, three person, three max entry ones. So this is a $5 buy in 150,000 guaranteed with a three max entry. That is the nickel. So be sure and take a look at that one. And as we go a little bit further down here, one of the ones that is certainly something that I'll be since the since uh, my slant is gone this week, I'll probably be looking at the flea flicker here um, to get my mass multi-entry in here. $5 buy-in, 100000 guaranteed, and 10000 to first in this one. So certainly some tournaments, uh, some fun tournaments to get in. $3 single entry as well. Uh, if, if you're really into the single entry tournaments, I certainly am into the single entry tournament. So we want to take a look there. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one we click on because uh, we're just going to be taking a look at the picks here. So we'll just click on this pylon while we're at it and uh, see what's going on here in as far as the player pool. So if as we're looking at the quarterbacks here, um, listen, Rodgers, Brady, this week, not going to happen for me. Uh, two most expensive guys, and frankly, Rodgers on one leg is just not something I'm willing to invest in right now, even though they are up against the Buffalo Bills. So not going to do it for me. Drew Brees, I think we need to focus. Let's start out a couple of uh, with just a couple of games here, and I think this is something that – you know, game stack type situations are things that we need to really look at a lot more uh, whenever we're doing stuff in, in DFS. And this is one of those situations. I mean, this New Orleans Giants game is just absolutely nutso right here. So you've got Drew Brees coming in at 6,600, who's just been passing all over the place. Then at the running back situation, you got Alvin Kamara coming in at 9,600. He's a great play. I mean, this game's got a 50 total into it. And then the, 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 the other running back on the Giants side is Saquon Barkley coming in at 8,100. So we have massive, massive price tags on quarterback, both running backs. Then we go to the wide receiver position. Michael Thomas, the most expensive wide receiver as well, 9,100. Odell Beckham, the second most expensive receiver at 8,700. I mean, you look at Michael Thomas, he's caught 38 of the 40 targets thrown at him this week. You got Odell Beckham. People might be scared of Marshawn Lattimore in this one, but Marshawn Lattimore, he's good, but he's not like one of those complete lockdown corners that, that can't be beaten. And of course, I mean, Odell Beckham can beat anybody. We saw Jalen Ramsey. He gave up, you know, over 100 yards to Odell Beckham uh, back in week one. So Odell Beckham certainly on the radar here as far as a game stack and everything uh, goes as well. Here's an interesting, here's an interesting scenario, though. Uh, at tight end if you want to come down all the way here 3300 Ben Watson is only 3300 Ben Watson got 11 targets over the last two weeks so he is at least getting looks and you know if he were to happen to get a touchdown at this ridiculously low price at 3300 that is going to really really help you in these tournaments but the guy that I think everyone's going to end up falling on just the way that construction kind of roster construction roster builds are going to go Sterling Shepard right here at 4,900. Sterling Shepard at 4,900 is just not enough for him. He is a $5,000 player for sure. And whenever we look at him being at 4,900 and with this game being so incredibly popular and with everyone being so expensive, 
I think everyone's going to naturally want a piece of this and go down to Sterling Shepard at 4,900. And I can't really blame him. I mean, listen, Evan Ingram is out for this game. That's going to create more targets, you would think, for Sterling Shepard. And the Saints just lost their starting slot corner, Patrick Robinson. He's on IR. So everything points the direction of Shepard. I think he's a cash game lock. And you kind of got to make a decision when it comes to tournaments, right? You've got to either you've got to either decide to fade, be with the field, or be really over the field. Um, I expect Shepard will be somewhere in that thirty to forty percent range owned um, this week because just the way that I think roster construction is going to go. So be sure and kind of make that decision there. And another decision we're going to have to make is: Can you afford Alvin Kamara in cash? Because when you look right here, he's ninety six hundred, and do have some really good options as we go a little bit lower here. Uh, that are cheaper so that game certainly Saints and Giants you can stack that game up I would suggest stacking that game up I would say uh, run various versions of game stacks in that one game stacks have been doing very very well in these large field GPPs if you can find a game that goes off another game that I think everyone is going to be uh, turning their attention to is this Bengals and Falcons game Uh, it's a 53 total in that one if we come down here Matt Ryan comes in at 6100 he was 5700 last week went absolutely bananas if you guys remember and Matt Ryan at 6100 might still be kind of underpriced here if we look at his game logs gone for 31 and 43 in his last two games right here so for for me um, yeah, definitely a guy that I'm going to be uh, looking at is, is, is Matt Ryan here. So Matt Ryan going to get some, some love and some attention for me for sure. Uh, I'm going to game stack this one as well. I mean, if you look at this Bengals, if you look at this Bengals offense, I think that uh, Andy Dalton is probably going to be my cash quarterback this week. He's only 5,400. And this Atlanta defense is just absolutely injury ridden. I mean, there's so many injuries in the secondary at linebacker everywhere all over the place. And so I think Dalton's up for a big day here. We got a, obviously going to be good weather no matter what, because they're inside a dome. They're going to be on a fast track. And it looks like A.J. Green is going to be healthy here, even though he was he did have to leave last week's game. So for me, going to be all over Andy Dalton, like I said, probably going to be my cash game quarterback this week at the running back position. We got Geo. Gio Bernard coming in at 6,300. Gio just being a massive part of this offense, as we figured with Joe Mixon being out. Looks like Joe Mixon's going to be out at least one more week. So we have one more week of Gio Bernard. And we see last week when he got every he got every single rushing attempt. Granted, it was only 12, but then you look at the receiving stats as well. Got nine targets for you. Was able to get in the end zone. I think this is another smash spot here because this. Falcons team just gives it up to running backs. We've seen it two weeks in a row with with McCaffrey and with Kamara. So for me, uh, Gio Bernard, very, very high up on my list and probably going to be uh, probably on my cash game team as well. Um, But there's a couple of different builds that I'm working with right now. And so I can't really say that for sure that I'm going to be locking him in, but certainly going to have high exposure because I'm going to have a lot of game stacks with this one as well. Don't hate Tevin Coleman either um, in this game. So Tevin Coleman right here at uh, 5,900. Tevin Coleman can certainly, uh, can certainly, I, I, the only problem I think I have with Tevin Coleman here is I much prefer Geo. And if I'm going to game stack, I don't know if I want to run two running backs in the same game. That's a decision you'll have to make. It'll certainly be a unique lineup construction, but I tend to not do that. I don't see very many tournament winning lineups that have that combination. So not going to be looking to do that. AJ Green, as I mentioned, 7,500 right here. Apparently is going to be good to go, so no worries there with him. One of the most popular guys on the week as we scroll down here way down into the mid-4,000s is going to be Tyler Boyd right here at 4,600. Tyler Boyd went absolutely bonkers last week, and now this is one of those situations where AJ Green did leave the field, but six catches on seven targets for 132 yards and a touchdown but if you look at the week prior this guy has just become a big part of this offense got another nine targets the prior week 91 yards and a touchdown there's a statistic that they were floating around i wish i could quote the person who said it but there was a statistic going around the twitter machine that tyler boyd whenever andy dalton is under distress that he is the first target that that uh, Andy Dalton looks for, and we love that. I mean, if, if, if he's the guy that's a safety blanket, if he's the guy that, that Andy Dalton trusts, then, you know, we should be trusting him too. I think this price tag is too short. Uh, probably will be cash gaming Tyler Boyd. That's probably why I'm uh, – that's why I've been fiddling around on my cash lineups. I don't know if I want three Bengals, so that's kind of my, my interesting decision here 
with Geo and Tyler Boyd. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty much locked in on Dalton at 5,400. That just opens things up so incredibly much. At the wide receiver position, going back a look to the top here on the Falcons side of things, you're going to see Julio Jones here at 8,200. He was very, very popular last week and did not really do much for you. If you see right here, Julio Jones just can't get in the end zone no matter what. Only got six targets. Listen, the Saints paid a lot of attention to him. I mean, they did. They paid a lot of attention to him. Was still able to turn the five catches into 96 yards, but only 14.6 points at 7,900. That's certainly not going to do anything for you in tournaments. So uh, the guy that did do everything for you in tournaments down here is Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley coming in at 4,900 this week was 3,700 last week. So he got a $1,200 boost here. But the reason for that is because Calvin Ridley went out and caught seven of eight targets for 146 and three touchdowns. Now, the concerning thing with Calvin Ridley here is that Muhammad Sanu is still running more routes than Calvin Ridley is. So he's still kind of the third receiver there for this Falcons team. I don't think it's a fate. Certainly in game stacks, I'm going to have Calvin Ridley in game stacks. There's just it's too easy with, 40, with him costing 4,900. That's for sure. He's going to be chalked this week. Everyone saw that blow-up game. He's super cheap. I'm wondering in tournaments if the right decision is to fade him. Um, probably a decision I'm going to be making is to fade him. It might end up costing me, but hopefully it'll be a Julio week and I will just be overweight on Julio on the tight end side of things in this game. Yet another good play here at 3,800 is Tyler Eifert. Tyler Eifert was uh, played 49 snaps and 42 snaps the last two weeks. One of the big things we've been worried about with Tyler Eifert is, is he going to be able to get on the field? And they have been getting him on the field and got eight targets last week as well. So uh, certainly somebody that when you see Eric Ebron here, we'll talk about him in just a second, uh, right, in this, right in this price range right here, uh, pretty good pivot, I believe. All right, so those are two games we're going to be targeting. Certainly uh, worthy, worthy of game stacks, worthy of one-offs, worthy of everything like that. But uh, two games that should be heavily targeted by you as well, I believe. Uh, super high totals and lots of uh, pretty good environment for scoring in those games with the defenses and offenses and everything that are going on there. At the quarterback position, outside of those guys that we just mentioned, uh, Drew Brees is going to have some exposure to him. Deshaun Watson seems like he's going to be popular. The more this week goes on, the more I hear people talking about Deshaun Watson – I don't, I'm not in love with this matchup, to be honest with you, against Indianapolis. I mean, they very well could go off in this game. Um, look, with Will Fuller, Will Fuller basically just goes for 100 yards every single time that he's active when Deshaun Watson's at quarterback. Uh, through the two games that Will Fuller's played, he's got 20 targets. But um, I don't know. I, I'm This Colts defense, I watched that game, and then I watched the All-22 back, and I think they're not as bad as we think. I think they're not as bad as we think. I think this is a team that might uh, might kind of stifle some of these plays that we think look like slam dunks here. So maybe some exposure to Watson, but likely would just drop down to to Ryan there on save the save the two hundred bucks. Uh, as we go a little bit lower here, the one other play I'm going to bring up that I'm going to uh, probably have healthy exposure to is going to be Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield coming in at 5,300, making his first start on the road at Oakland. Matt, what are you thinking about? What are you doing? That's so ridiculous, and I understand. That that seems like it does. I just really like what I've seen from Baker Mayfield. I watched a lot of the preseason. I watched when he came in and led them. He rode them to their first win in forever, unlocked the fridge, unlocked the beer fridges all over Cleveland. People are drinking free Bud Light because of Baker Mayfield. He's the savior. He's the hero here. But honestly, I think this dude can play. I really believe that Baker Mayfield – is going to be a guy that can move the ball here. And this Oakland defense is not good. It's old and um, certainly has lost any sort of semblance of pass rush whenever they got rid of Khalil Mack. I mean, they have the lowest pressure percentage on the quarterback in the league. So I think Baker Mayfield, with time, is going to be able to produce some pretty good numbers here. Uh, tournament play, not a cash play, tournament play, but uh, certainly somebody that I'm going to be looking to. And if you're going to do that, then I would be pairing him all the way down here at 4,300 with Antonio Callaway. Antonio Callaway is a guy that is, uh, whenever we look at the the, the the stats here from from him, listen, no Josh Gordon in town. Baker Mayfield, of course, starting at quarterback. And then one of the things we like to see here, look, 11 targets last week going to Antonio Callaway. Look, not very efficient, four receptions of those 11 targets, only 20 yards, but looking his way a lot. And those are the type of situations we want. He's a burner. He's a guy that can get behind the defense. He's got it and catch long bombs for you. And he's only 4,300. So since he's only 4,300, this is what makes him so appealing 
in that stack type situation because one big catch could play could pay off his salary for you. And uh, I believe that, that there's a decent chance for that this week. But let's go back to the running back position here. Uh, we already talked about Kamara. The c- decision is not whether Kamara's a good play. He is, for sure. The only qu- question is, can you afford him? He's 9,600. That's going to be how it's going to be up to you whether it comes down on your lineup builds. Um, how are you, you going to go about it? Melvin Gordon, another popular guy here. The, the, the Chargers are 10.5 point favorites in this game. My worry is Austin Eckler is certainly a big part of this offense. And my worry is the Chargers get up a ton in this game and Melvin Gordon just doesn't get a a full workload. The thing about Melvin Gordon here, whenever we look at his logs, 15, nine and 15 rushing attempts. This is not a guy that's rushing the ball 20, 20 times a game, 20 plus times a game. He's just been incredibly efficient with scoring touchdowns and then getting you a a lot of help in the, in the receiving game um, side of things here. So for me, kind of a sticky situation if we're being honest i mean like you know this is this is you know 80 what, what are we looking at 8300 from elvin gordon for a situation where maybe he ends up on the sideline um i don't know i'm i'm certainly not having him in cash this week i know a lot of people probably going to play him in cash i will not be one of those people saquon barkley will be in my cash lineup so i love this game i told you about all this and he's just a stud uh being used not only in the rush, but in the past game. And he's so dangerous in the open field that uh, I just, I, I really like the upside with him as well as the floor. Uh, right here, Ezekiel Elliott, another guy that is making the rounds, is, is, looks like he's going to be pretty popular. 7,700 here at home against Detroit. Detroit's defense is definitely not good. Um, Zeke, 69, 78, and then 127 rush yards. He does have two touchdowns. Uh, he's got four targets, six targets, and eight targets. So he's increased his target share each week that the season has gone on. And listen, at the end of the day, he's the only guy they got. I mean, they have no talent whatsoever at receiver. So it's the Zeke show here. Uh, I don't hate Zeke. I think he's a tournament play. Certainly a guy that I'm going to be having in tournaments. I just don't know if I'm going to be getting to him, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, in uh, cash games. It's just one of those things the Cowboys play so incredibly slow. And Detroit really doesn't play that fast either. Dallas averaging over 30 seconds of play. It's 28th in the league. And so for me, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know where the upside is here. And again, maybe Detroit just decides, like, we're going to take Ezekiel Elliott out of this game, and Dak Prescott is going to have to beat us with this ragtag group of wide receivers. So uh, tournament play for me, not a cash play, which is interesting considering the volume that, that Zeke is getting there. Just not something I feel incredibly great about that offense as a whole. Uh, a couple of other running back uh, plays I want—I do want to mention here uh, as we come down a little bit lower. Let's get to Carlos Hyde right here for Cleveland. Kind of under the radar, getting a ton of action for this Browns team. And we mentioned it's going to be Baker Mayfield on the road, making his first start. So maybe Carlos Hyde becomes kind of a security blanket for him. But this is one of those things that I think has gone a little under the radar. 22 rush attempts, 16 rush attempts, and 23 rush attempts for Carlos Hyde in the first three games of the season. And then you come over here and, uh, you know, a handful of receptions to go along with that and targets. Um, Not no huge, huge games, but double digits. And then then a 24 point game last week. Uh, I think, like I said, I don't believe in this Oakland defense. And so I think Carlos Hyde is pretty interesting this week. Certainly somebody that I will be looking at. Now, there's going to be two schools of thought here for the running back position in New England. There's going to be people who say stay completely away, and there's going to be people who try to convince you between now and Sunday that James White or Sonny Michelle is going to be a good play. Rex Burkhead got put on IR, so with Rex Burkhead put on IR, now there's less crowded backfield, and then you look at this situation where Sonny Michelle got over 70% of the rushing attempts last week, so... If they want to force him the ball in a game where they are seven-point favorites at home against this Miami team, then Sony Michelle, maybe Sony Michelle is the play. And then there's going to be people who say, well, no, no, they're going to go with the guy that they know. James White is going to get all of that. For me, uh, I probably will not be playing either one of these guys, to be perfectly honest with you, because I don't think that the upside is there from a tournament per- tournament perspective to really drive this home for you. Um, of course, we've seen these new england backs sometimes come out of nowhere and score three touchdowns in a game if that's the case i won't I, I just won't be the beneficiary of that um one of the other cheaper guys that i do want to mention as well as we go down here 4400 in this lions uh, offense carry on johnson maybe i don't really know if he's going to be, end up being chalk or not but he did go over 100 yards the first lions running back to go over 100 yards in forever i mean absolutely crazy i think it's yeah right here since 20 
13. He was the first running back to go over 100 yards for the Detroit Lions since 2013. He did he did that on 16 attempts. The problem there, obviously, is LeGarrette Blunt is still on that team, and they still want to get him carries. However, this Cowboys team is going to be without Sean Lee. When Sean Lee doesn't play, they are much, much more vulnerable to the run. The statistics back this up. I mean, several, several percentage points worse with Sean Lee off of the field. So something to keep an eye on there if you want to take a tournament flyer on a guy that's pretty cheap. I mean, you know, 4400 for carry on Johnson here. Um, not going to break the bank, so he doesn't have to do a ton to really kind of get things going for you there. If he can somehow manage to get 100 yards again and then is able to score, you know, punch in maybe a couple of short touchdowns, then uh, he could really, really be a tournament winner for you. So somebody to keep on your radar. At the wide receiver position, don't have to tell you about Michael Thomas. Don't have to tell you about Odell Beckham. Don't have to tell you about uh, DeAndre Hopkins in this one either. Only the fact that, um, only the fact that, like I said, I do believe that this Indianapolis defense is a little bit better. That said, if you if you're in on this Houston offense, I think Hopkins is the way to go in the pairing because I think Fuller is going to be incredibly popular. He's just way cheaper. And the ownerships are going to be way, way, way higher. So if you want to go against the grain in the tournament field, I think Hopkins is the way to go. Keenan Allen missed practice on Wednesday and Thursday, did return to practice on Friday. So looks like he'll be able to go, but certainly something we want to monitor all the way up until kickoff. If for some strange reason Keenan Allen is not able to go, then Mike Williams is would be like a slam dunk play way down here at 4,500. I'm already seeing some some decent work there for this offense as you see like seven targets last week for mike williams so already seeing some some decent some decent share there and if for some reason keenan allen can't go then that would be absolutely amazing uh listen don't like green bay Devonte adams is going to meet a lot of trey white anyway so we don't want to deal with that um aj green i believe in the cincinnati game is going to get far less ownership than tyler boyd so if you want to go against the grain there aj green so weird to say going against the grain to go with aj green but i believe that's going to be the case there jarvis landry again should be a beneficiary of baker mayfield being under being under center there come down a little bit further uh De- Devontae parker did pop up on the injury report on uh on friday typically not a good thing when you pop up towards the end of the week on the injury report that being said now this wide receiver core because it was so jumbled maybe it opens up a little bit and maybe Kenny Stills becomes a play at 5,800 if you believe that this Dolphins team is going to get behind to New England and Ryan Tannehill is just going to have to throw a lot Kenny Stills is only 5,800 and we know that he's got the speed to to score long some long touchdowns and things like that so if they're going to be putting it up a ton then maybe he is one of the guys you want to consider there a couple of guys here on the lower end that I do want to bring up Geronimo Allison if you want to go in this Green Bay game if you believe they're going to have to score on Buffalo through the air because they have that weird three-headed running back situation so maybe you don't want to go there but you want a piece of this Green Bay team because they are big home favorites against this Buffalo team Trey White is going to be all over Devontae Adams which would lead you to believe that uh, one of these secondary receivers or maybe even the tight end Jimmy Graham would be a place to go there so Geronimo Allison only 4,700 in this one a little bit further down and this is probably a cash game play that I'm looking at as well even though he's going up against an elite defense as Quincy and Nunwa he got an incredible price discount down to 4300 because he's going against Jacksonville but we're just going to play basically the volume here look at this 10 targets 11 targets and eight targets so I mean he hasn't had fewer than eight targets in three games here so Darnold looking his way early and often now he's not going to to be a slate winner for you i don't think he's a tournament play by any stretch of the imagination but in cash games only 4300 getting you know eight to ten targets a game i'll take it right i mean this is just one of those situations where in cash games sometimes we have to take the value when it presents itself so we're going to take the value where it presents itself at tight end you can go gronk you can go Ertz. Might even be good to pay up this week because you're going to be paying up to be contrarian. Because at the end of the day, if people want Kamara in their lineups and they want one of the stud wide receivers, they're not going to have the money to afford a Gronk or an Ertz. So if you want to go against the grain, then you could probably come in with a situation where you get a Gronk or an Ertz in your lineup, and then now you're really now you're really cooking there because you are uh, someplace that everybody else is not. Jimmy Graham here just mentioned that a second ago with Green Bay. If you believe that Trey White is going to shut down uh, Devontae Adams, they have to go elsewhere than Jimmy Graham. Uh, Jared Cook for Oakland, 
getting the volume there. That's really the only thing I can say about that. I really like just these lower plays. I think Eifert is a great pivot off of Eric Ebron. Eric Ebron should be your cash should be your cash tight end this week. And basically, it comes down to the fact that Jack Doyle is out yet again. When he was out, Eric Ebron got 11 targets last week. He'll probably see somewhere in the neighborhood of that again. Yes, he's going to drop passes for you, but at 3,600, you just don't get that type of workload at 3,600. So you just kind of have to take the value yet again. Like I said, Ben Watson at 3,300 is someone that I'm looking at. And if for whatever reason, the uh, Alshon Jeffrey does not come back for the Eagles. Dallas Goddard is, they're running a lot of two tight end sets there in Philadelphia. He is only 2,800. Certainly someone I'm going to be looking at as well. On the defensive side of things, I'm going to be going all the way down in cash games, certainly at the Bears at 2,600 right here. It's just such a great spot. Fitzpatrick's going to turn the ball over. The Bears get so much pressure on the quarterback. Tampa Bay might score points, but it doesn't matter. They're going to be presenting opportunities for the Bears to make plays as well. So uh, definitely the cash game defense I'm looking at. And if you want to pay up a little bit, the Eagles going up against Tennessee with Marcus Mariota, who they have come out and said doesn't have proper function of his arm and wrist and hand and elbows and different things like that is certainly something that uh, I wouldn't mind taking advantage of there. So Guys, have a great, great week number four in the NFL. Be sure and remember to head over to playpicks.com. Be sure to head over to playpicks.com backslash bonus when you go to backslash bonus. We've got all of our bonuses listed there on the page. You can take advantage of DFS bonuses and you can take advantage of sportsbook bonuses if you live out in New Jersey or in the New Jersey area where you might travel to New Jersey to make some bets every now and then. So we've got some great stuff going on over there, some free money offers, so be sure and do that. And right here on YouTube, please hit the little subscribe button. We need to get as many subscribers as we can. So do that, and when these videos publish, you'll get notified. And hopefully, hopefully, we help you guys win some money along the way. Till next week.